Treaty with the Sioux, Upper Yankton Band, October 28, 1865, ratified March 5, 1866. Articles of a treaty made and concluded at Fort Sully in the territory of Dakota by and between Newton Edmonds, Governor and ex officio Superintendent of Indian Affairs of Dakota Territory, Edward B. Taylor, Superintendent of Indian Affairs for the Northern Superintendency, Major General S. R. Curtis, Brigadier General H. H. Sibley, Henry W. Reed, and Orrin Guernsey, Commissioners on the part of the United States, duly appointed by the President and the undersigned chiefs and headmen of the Upper Yankton Band of Dakota or Sioux Indians. Article 1. The Upper Yankton Band of Dakota or Sioux Indians represented in council hereby acknowledge themselves to be subject to the exclusive jurisdiction and authority of the U.S. and hereby obligate and bind themselves individually and collectively not only to cease all hostilities against the person and property of its citizens, but to use their influence and, if necessary, physical force to prevent other bands of the Dakota Indians or other adjacent tribes from making hostile demonstrations against the government or people of the U.S. Article 2. Inasmuch as the government of the U.S. is desirous to arrest the fusion of blood between Indian tribes within its jurisdiction hitherto at war with each other, the Upper Yankton Band of Dakota or so Indians represented in council anxious to respect the wishes of the government, hereby agree to discontinue for the future all attacks upon the person or persons of other tribes unless first attacked by them and to use their influence to promote peace everywhere in the region occupied or frequented by them. Article 3. All controversies or differences arising between the Upper Yankton Band of Dakota or Sioux Indians represented in council and other tribes of Indians involving the question of peace or war shall be submitted for the arbitrament of the president or such person or persons as may be designated by him and the decision or or award faithfully observed by the said band represented in council. Article 4. The said band represented in council shall withdraw from the roots over land already established or hereafter to be established through their country and in consideration thereof, and of their non-interference with the persons and property of citizens of the U.S. traveling thereon, the government of the U.S. agree to pay the said ban the sum of $10,000 annually for 20 years in such articles as the Secretary of Interior may direct, provided that said ban, so represented in council, shall faithfully confirm to the requirements of this treaty. Article 5. Should any individual or individuals or portion of the band of the Upper Yankton Band of Dakota or Sioux represented in council desire hereafter to locate permanently upon any land claimed by said band for the purposes of agriculture or other similar pursuits, it is hereby agreed by the properties to this treaty that said individuals shall be protected in such location against any annoyance or molestation on the part of whites or Indians, and whenever twenty lodges or families of the Upper Yankton Band shall have located on land for agricultural purposes and signified the same to their agent or superintendent they as well as other families so locating shall receive the sum of twenty five dollars annually for five years for each family in agricultural implements and improvements and when one hundred lodges or family shall have so engaged in agricultural pursuits they shall be entitled to a farmer and a blacksmith at the expense of the government as also teachers at the option of the secretary of interior whenever deemed necessary Article 6. Any amendment or modification of this treaty by the Senate of the U.S. shall be considered final and binding upon the said ban represented in council as a part of this treaty in the same manner as if it had been subsequently presented and agreed to by the chiefs and headmen of said ban. In testimony whereof the commissioners on the part of the U.S. and the chiefs and headmen of the said upper Yankton Band of Dakota or Sioux Indians have hereunto set their hands this 20th day of October 1865, after the contents had previously been read, interpreted, and explained to the chiefs and headmen, Nin Edmonds, Edward B. Taylor, S. R. Curtis, Major General, H. H. Sibley, Brigadier General, Henry W. Reed, Orrin Guernsey. The above signatures are made in our presence. George D. Hill, S. L. Spink, A. W. Hubbard, G. C. Moody, Chief, Big Head, Nasalat Tonka, His X Mark, Soldier, Big Hand, Napa Tonka, His X Mark, Soldier, Left Handed Bear, Mato Chaka, His X Mark, Soldier, The Fine Dressed Man, White Chukuyaka, His X Mark, The Man Covered with Lice, Haopuza, His X Mark, Little Soldier, Akichicha, Kichila, His X Mark, Spread Horn, Hakatitna, His X Mark, Black Tiger, Iko Matsapa, His X Mark, The Man Afraid of His War Club, Champiko Kuipa, His X Mark, The Big Shaved Head, Koshla Takanka, His X Mark, Lazy Bear, Matochik, Patne, His X Mark, The Man, Rock Man, Tonka Wichatsa, His X Mark, Chief, Black Catfish, Obasapa, His X Mark, Chief, The Curly Headed Goose, Maga Bombado, His X Mark. The above signatures in this handwriting were made in presence of the undersigned on the 28th and 29th October 1865 at Fort Surly, Major A.P. Shreve, Paymaster, U.S. Army, John Patty, Lieutenant Colonel, 7th Iowa Cavalry.